We have more for your ears only. I'm Eddie Robinson. I'm David Alpern with this quote from the news. Just kids, but they were highly trained. How could we lose that many all at once? That was Joe Peters, the assistant principal at Prescott High School in Arizona on the 19 hotshot firefighters who died when sudden winds fanned the flame of the monster wildfire in that state. Authorities launched an investigation, and experts said the dangerous conditions might well be a new normal. Now this. It's a sad day for America. It is a sad day. It's a sad day in America, indeed. Uh, again, a very sad day for the children of America. It's a sad day when unelected judges uh, change the definition of marriage. They attack something that they have no jurisdiction over whatsoever, the foundational unit of our society, which is marriage. I would consider that a betrayal of the of the Republican uh, members of the House and a betrayal of the Republicans uh, throughout the country. A montage of Republican reaction to the Supreme Court's double ruling favoring same-sex marriage in California and for equality of federal benefits put high-profile party leaders in conflict with majority opinion across the country. And California's Republican Congressman Dana Raubacher was typical of many conservative House members standing firm against the Senate's historic bipartisan passage of immigration reform, including both the multi-billion dollar surge in border security and a path to citizenship for 11 million illegal immigrants that would add more social safety net costs but more tax revenue as well. The party's reaction to those two dramatic developments, as well as ongoing state battles over abortion, voting rights, and a number of other key issues may do much to shape the party's image and prospects in local elections, next year's midterm voting, and the 2016 presidential race. To discuss this party crossroads for your ears only, we're joined again by Craig Shirley, Republican consultant and historian. His books include Reagan's Revolution, Rendezvous with Destiny, and December 1941. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. Let's start with the same-sex marriage decisions. House Speaker John Boehner said he was personally opposed but respected the court's decisions. Other leaders seem more ready to continue fighting the spread of same-sex marriage. How do you think that will affect the party's prospects in states where the issue is still in question and, and its image nationwide? Well, I think that, uh, uh, David, is, is that there's going to be some uh, continued opposition in Congress, but it seems that, that the, uh, the, the wind of history is, is pushing in a different uh, direction. Uh, my own guess is, is that we're going to end up someplace, uh, there's going to be some type of equilibrium uh, where they'll, they'll find a uh, compromise. You know, this is, you know, really what is uh, the American uh, government politics is based on, is, is, is uh, finding some type of uh, compromise between two opposing positions where uh, th- there will be the federal uh, law, which the Supreme Court has already decided on, that applies to uh, uh, gays' marriage in terms of benefits and uh, death uh, taxes and things like that, but the states will have their own policy whether or not to recognize uh, uh, same-sex marriage or not. So you don't see a, a sort of rear guard action in Congress trying to uh, do something with the financing that and the and the complications of melding these two different standards together. Oh, I think there's definitely going to be some. Uh, there, there, in fact, uh, Congressman Tim uh, Holzkamp uh, is already uh, from Kansas, uh, Republican conservatives already introduced a bill. Uh, calling for the federal government to recognize marriages between, uh, uh, you know, man and a woman, but I don't. I just don't see that. And I think most people would agree don't don't see that going anywhere. So, um, to the extent that they do get involved, it's going to be to regularize the uh, federal treatment of uh, gay of uh, homosexual couples and heterosexual couples. How do you see the GOP split on immigration affecting party appeal to Latino voters? Well. You know, this is somewhat, Eddie, this is somewhat of a myth that, uh, that Latino voters have ever been open um, to uh, the, really the, GO, to the Republican Party. Uh, Reagan in, in 1980 uh, got uh, 37%. In 1984, I think it was 34%. George Bush was a high water um, in 2000, 2004, somewhere around 40%. But in many ways, that was more Hispanic's aversion to first Al Gore and then the uh, aristocratic John Kerry <laughs> than it was uh, uh, an embrace of Bush. Although Bush did, you know, uh, culturally uh, was uh, made uh, cultural appeals based on his experience as governor of Texas and his uh, the fact that he was bilingual. Um, but Hispanic voters have traditionally not been available. The Republican Party has always bounced between 20 and 30 percent of the Hispanic vote. So. Um, if the immigration bill does not pass the House, and I, my, I'm guessing it doesn't pass the House, I don't think it's going to have 
uh, any uh, great or uh, deleterious effect on how much uh, Republicans can appeal to Hispanic voters. What about the impact on the presidential prospects of Florida's Republican Senator Marco uh, Rubio, who took huge heat last week for supporting the deal, including both that border security surge and uh, the path to legal status? That's a different uh, matter altogether. I think Rubio uh, has been hurt uh, badly uh, uh, in this whole process, David. I think that um, if you get right down to cases, is that the, the outsiders, the Tea Party, the conservatives, the, the, the Republicans who are anti-Republican Party, uh, uh, are uh, uh, the, the mugwumps, is what uh, you, know, you might in the old day refer to them. Um, is that they just don't trust Washington. They just don't trust anybody in government. And they, they see, the, and that's why the, the immigration bill, they, just, uh, they, don't, they don't trust the government to do the right thing. They've seen, they believe too many times where government has failed or said one thing and done another. Rubio uh, got crosswise with the, with the uh, conservatives in the party by uh, hanging too tightly and, and wrapping himself too tightly in the immigration bill. Um, and I think a lot of people in the Tea Party have come to see, think that he has been somehow captured uh, by the Republican establishment. Speaking of presidential prospects, uh, how do you think another presidential run by Texas Governor Rick Perry might be affected by his dramatic support for tougher state abortion restrictions against an even more dramatic filibuster by a female state senator? Um, Rick Perry's better off talking about the uh, pro-life position than he is about talking about um, you know, his, the mistakes he made in the uh, 2012 uh, Republican uh, primaries. So to the extent that he might run in 2016, he's probably made a, a, a baby step in a fa- toward a, uh, a more favorable direction toward running for 2016. And what's your best information or instinct on whether Perry will make another White House run after his unforgettable oops and uh, other bumbling last year? I don't sense that he has that real burning fire uh, in his belly to be president of the United States. So if I was betting, I would say he does not run in 2016. How is the party's image nationally affected by Perry's position on abortion in Texas and similar GOP moves in North Carolina and elsewhere, especially with women voters? Well, it can't be hurt any worse than it already is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's face it, the National Republican Party image is not, uh, is not very good these days. But that's the key. The National Republican Party is, is that when you separate out conservative issues and you ask most Americans on issues of government spending, life, uh, those things, they tend to, pluralities and even majorities, break for conservatism. The problem is they don't see the Republican Party as, as the embodiment of a conservative philosophy anymore. So, real, and this is what's led to the, the bifurcation of the Republican Party, because there's really two Republican parties in America today. There, there's the national Karl Rove Bush Party, which is the establishment, which is the big government party, and then there's the, the populist Tea Party, Reagan, tea, you know, conservative outsiders. Sarah Palin spoke to the frustrations of the outsiders when she said the other day she could uh, consider leaving the Republican Party for a third party. I think that you're going to see more and more talk. That's what I would urge everybody to, to keep an eye out for, is more and more meetings and discussions and talk about the creation of a third uh, conservative party in America. Republican consultant and historian Craig Shirley. His books include Reagan's Revolution, Rendezvous with Destiny, and December 1941. Quote from the news, we're looking at a new model that's based not just on aid and assistance, but trade and partnership. That was President Obama pitching partnership on his visit to Africa in the interest of that continent and U.S. business eager for its growing market. Next, enlisting veterans to domestic missions for your ears only. 